The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this new session. I am Dayam Chukokam Roni, your Form 2 chemistry teacher. Today we are going to start a new subtopic, which is the atom. This subtopic is under the module Matter, Properties and Transformation. We begin with the correction of the assignment of the previous lesson. The assignment was 1. Define rusting and give the conditions necessary for rusting to occur. And B. Give four methods of preventing rusting. The first question Define rusting. We said rusting is a chemical reaction in which iron combines with oxygen, which is in air, in the presence of water or moisture to form a reddish brown substance called rust. And the formula of rust is F2O3 N water molecule. So we said where N is a whole number. For rusting to occur, the following must be present. We say we must have iron, oxygen, water or moisture. If one of these conditions is not present, rusting will not occur. For example, if you have oxygen and water and iron is not present, no rusting. If there is iron and water but no oxygen, rusting also cannot occur. And in the previous lesson, we saw an experiment to show or to demonstrate the conditions necessary for rusting to occur. And we said, for rusting to occur, iron must be present, oxygen must be present, water or moisture must be present. We also said that the presence of impurities accelerates the rate of rusting. The second question is, Rusting can be prevented by the following method. The first method is painting. When you put a surface of either aluminum paint on the iron. The next method, galvanization. It is a coating of iron with zinc. So zinc which is resistant to, uh, to corrosion. We coat it, the surface of iron with zinc so as to prevent the rusting of our iron. The third method is by oiling, or what we also call grazing. Oil is applied at the surface of the iron. This helps to prevent oxygen from attacking the iron. And lastly, we said we can also do it by electroplating. Electroplating, which is a chemical process, and this process involves the coating of iron with a corrosion resistant metal. And we do it by the process called electrolysis. Our topic of today, the atom, this topic will be divided into the following lessons. 
composition of the atom, followed by the Bohr model of an atom, and lastly, atomic number and mass number. And after that, we are going to do calculations, how we can determine the mass number when we know the number of photons or the number of neutrons, and also how we can determine the number of photons from the atomic number. By the end of this topic, learners should be able to define an atom, draw the structure of an atom, locate subatomic particles in an atom, give the characteristics of subatomic particles, and next, draw the Bohr model of an atom, followed by relating the atomic number to the number of protons or electrons in an atom, and lastly, calculate the mass number of an atom from the number of protons and number of neutrons. Our lesson of today is titled The Composition of an Atom. The Composition of an Atom. The lesson will be unfold as follows. We shall begin with the objectives, prerequisite knowledge, a life situation, activity, composition of the atom, evaluation, followed by assignment, and lastly, references. By the end of this lesson, learners should be able to define an atom, draw the structure of an atom, and lastly, identify location of subatomic particle in an atom. To effectively understand this lesson, let's begin by answering the following questions. The first question there is, define an element and a molecule. And in the first topic, we saw all this definition when we're doing the atomic structure. So define an element and a molecule. Two, how many elements are known so far and why are they different from each other? The third question is, plus three minus three is equal to what? That's basic math. And lastly, what did Dalton's atomic theory say about atoms of the same element? We begin with the first question, which is the definition of an atom, an element, sorry, or an a molecule. An element is a pure substance. That is what we said. An element is a pure substance which cannot be further split into simpler substances by any chemical means. An element is a pure substance which cannot be further split into simpler substances by any chemical mean. A molecule now is the smallest particle of matter that can exist freely on its own. We made a clear difference between the two. And we said for molecules now, we can have a molecule of element and a molecule of compound. An example of molecule of element Chlorine, for example, the atom is Cl, but the molecule is Cl2. The same thing with hydrogen, for which the atom is H, but the molecule is H2. If you refer now to molecule of a compound, for example, carbon dioxide, which is also a molecule, therefore we have a molecule of compounds, which is formed from the combination of two or more atoms. And in the case precisely of carbon dioxide, we have carbon and oxygen, which are chemically combined together. How many elements are known as far? And naturally occurring elements are 900, 109 known elements. Elements differ from each other because element, each element is made up of only one type of atom. 
We said that the atoms of sodium, they are not the same like the atoms of potassium. And the atoms of potassium are as well different from the atoms of calcium. The third question was plus three minus three. So when you draw your number line, you go plus three and minus three, and you will notice that the answer will be zero. So plus three minus three, when two numbers have different signs, you subtract them and you maintain the signs. So we have the, the magnitude are the same. We have plus three minus three, and the answer is zero. If you are drawing a number line, you will shift from zero plus three, and after that, you will now again shift minus three to your left, and you will see that you will still have zero. The fourth question is, what did Dalton's atomic theory say about atoms of the same element? Dalton said that atoms of the same element are identical in all aspects. Atoms of the same element are identical in all aspects, and they are different from atoms of all other elements. Let us listen to this life situation. The life situation goes as follows. When Mr. Soko asks a Form 1 student or asks Form 1 student to state the charge of an atom and give reasons to define your answers, some said the atom is negatively charged since electrons are found in shells around the nucleus. Others said it is positively charged since the nucleus contains protons and it is at the center of the atom. And our question is, what is your own opinion? Hypothesis. What is your own opinion? An atom is another student also said that an atom is neutral because it has negative electrons and positive protons. They cancel each other. And if we take, for example, an atom with plus four protons and negative four electrons, we are going to see we have plus four, minus four, and zero, which means that an atom has zero charge, which is neutral. Look at the activity. Let us do this activity together. Look at the different flames below. Which one represents that of a cooking gas and that of firewood? And why they are different? So we have A and B. The one that represents for a cooking gas is A, and the one for firewood is B. The reason being that they are different because they both contain different atoms will contain atoms of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and smaller amount of other elements. Why cooking gas contain atoms of carbon and hydrogen only? So you see that in this case, they have different atoms. We begin now with our lesson proper, which is the atom and the composition of the atom. An atom can be defined as the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction. Each element is made up of only one type of atom. Dalton's atomic theory could not fully explain certain observations made on working with other with matter, such as differences in the masses of the atom. So, during working, he noticed that some atoms were having different masses where he could not explain of the same element. For example, carbon with a mass of 12 and 14 respectively. He could not explain that. Upon carrying out research on elements, scientists like J.J. Thompson and Chadway found out that atoms were made up of smaller particles called subatomic particle. 
And that's why in the definition of an atom, we have removed the word indivisible. We don't say again that an atom is the smallest indivisible particle because it has been noted that this atom contains subatomic particles. The subatomic particles that we are talking about are electrons, protons, and neutrons. With the help of other scientists like Rutherford, the detailed internal structure of an atom was known. The structure of an atom. The atom consists of two main parts, which are A, the nucleus. And the nucleus is the tiny and massive part of an atom, which is found at the center of the atom. The nucleus contains the protons and the electrons. The second part, the shells, also called the orbit. These are circular parts around the nucleus of an atom on which the electrons are, being, are found. The shells are also called the electron orbit. The protons, the neutrons, and the electrons are known as subatomic particles. An atom has the same number of protons and electrons, making an atom to be electrically neutral. So in an atom, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And that is why an atom is electrically neutral. Below is a diagram of the generalized structure of the atom. And we have seen that we have a very small, tiny, and massive part called the nucleus, which contains the protons and the neutrons. We also have imaginary lines, those are circular lines, around the nucleus, which contains the electrons. So in, we can conclude that an atom contains one. The two parts of an atom, an atom is made up of the nucleus and the shells. And in the nucleus, we have the protons and the neutrons, and on shells, we have electrons. The table below gives us a summary of the subatomic particle. We start with the first one, which is the proton, denoted, or the with symbol P, relative mass 1, and the position or the location in an atom, the protons are found in the nucleus. The charge is positive. Electrons, symbol E, relative mass 0 or 1 on 1840, in which we are going to say that it is negligible. Location, they are found on shells and the charge negative. And the last subatomic particle, neutron, with symbol N and the relative mass 1, location in the atom, in the nucleus, and the relative charge is 0 or neutral. We can now say that, you see that the nucleus which contains the protons and the electrons, you see that the electrons, they have no charge, the protons, they have a positive charge, and the overall charge now of the nucleus will be the charge of the proton. And that is why the nucleus is positively charged. Let us now see some of the modification of the Dalton's atomic charge that we saw in the first topic. Modern scientific discoveries have led to the modifications of the Dalton's atomic theory as follows. One, the fact that atoms are the smallest indivisible particle of an element is not true again. Reason being that this is because subatomic particles, which are smaller than the atom, have been discovered and they include electrons, protons, and neutrons. The second one is that the fact that atoms can neither be created nor destroyed is still acceptable only for chemical 
reactions. Reason that atoms of some elements are usually created and destroyed during the process of radioactivity. That is nuclear fusion or fusion. The third one is that the idea that atoms of the same elements are alike, that is they are the same in all aspects, is no longer accepted due to the discovery of isotopes. Due to the existence of isotopes discovered with the mass spectrometer, you have been seen that, for example, we have carbon, but they are not alike. There's carbon 12, there's carbon 14. The third one is that the idea that when atoms combine to form molecules, they do so in small whole number is only true for inorganic substances, but not true for organic substances, which usually contain large number of atoms of various elements present. And some elements like iron even have fractions in their formula. So you will see that they are organic substances which have very large number, like carbon, can take and combine even 20 atoms of carbon. So you see that the idea that they do so in small whole number is not again valid for organic substances. Note, all atoms contain electrons and protons. All atoms contain neutrons except hydrogen atom. So the hydrogen atom does not contain the neutron. Apart from hydrogen, the other atoms contain this subatomic part too, that is electrons, protons, and neutrons. And we shall see how we can determine the number of protons, number of electrons, and number of neutrons in one atom of an element. Let us now revisit our real life. Well, Mr. Soko asks from two students to state the charge of an atom and give reasons to define your answers. Some said the atom is negatively charged since electrons are found in the shells around the nucleus. Others said it is positively charged since the nucleus contains protons and it is in, at the center of the atom. What is your opinion? And a hypothesis was that an atom is neutral because it has negative electrons and positive protons that cancel each other out. For example, in an atom, if you have four protons, that's plus four, and we have four electrons, that's negative four, we add them, we are going to have zero. Means that an atom has zero charge. Yes, this hypothesis is true. An atom is neutral because it has negative electrons and positive protons that cancel out each other. For example, plus four minus four gives zero, which means that an atom has zero charge and it is neutral. This hypothesis is correct because the number of electrons on the shell of an atom is always equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of that atom. So to conclude, an atom has no charge, it's electrically neutral because the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons in one atom of an element. If the atom has 15 protons in its nucleus of the atom, which means also that the atom has 15 electrons in the orbit, orbit, the nucleus on the shells. So if an atom has 15 protons in the nucleus, it means that that atom also have 15 electrons orbiting or moving on the shells. And mathematically, if you want to add, we see that we are going to have plus 15 minus 15, which will give zero, resulting in a charge of zero. Hence, an atom is electrically neutral. In the lesson of today, we saw that the atom is the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction. 
An atom consists of two main parts, the nucleus and the shells, or the orbit. An atom consists of three subatomic particles, the protons, the electrons, and the neutrons. Let's answer this question together. The question is, if you listen to this lesson, you should be able to answer the question. The question is, define an element and state its composition. Define an atom and state its composition. An atom is defined as the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So you see that in the definition, we have removed indivisible. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. It is composed of the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. The protons and the neutrons are found in the nucleus, and that they give the contribute to the mass of the atom. And the electrons are found on shells, and they are negatively charged, and have a negligible mass. As an assignment of today, the assignment is state four modifications of the Dalton's atomic theory. That's the first task. The second task is give the differences between the subatomic particles. So you, you give the differences between the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. And also, you read on the different scientists who discovered the different subatomic particles. For example, in the next lesson, I'm expecting one of you to tell me that the protons were discovered by, the neutrons were discovered by, and the electrons, you give the name as well. So that is the assignment that you are supposed to do before the next lesson. The lesson presented to you today, informations were gotten from your prescribed textbook, that's maximum chemistry. Some information also were gotten from New School Chemistry and GK Kid Campus. Other information as well were gotten from reliable source of internet and images as well. We have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on the Bohr model of an atom. See you in the next lesson. Una tege si, ma tege yop Una tege minga, ma tege nyum Una tege majang, ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen Ngani bana, ma tege mot Ngani la kiri, wa tege ndong Esa kina, bia jinki do Mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen Tam tama mote, tam zabike Tam tam a tonge, tam zabike, tam 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 a mote, tam zabike, mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen.